Good day folks, welcome to my beginner's guide for the Hero 9 Black. This video is geared to those who have never used a GoPro before. If you've purchased your very first GoPro or perhaps you got a Hero 9 Black over the holiday season, then this video is a great place to learn how to get up and running and filming with your GoPro quickly. In this beginner's guide we're going to talk about what memory to use with your GoPro, different charging techniques. We're also going to take a look at the menu and how to navigate it and how to change different filming modes. Along the way I'll throw in some tips and tricks to help you get the most out of your new camera. So let's just jump right in and get started. So this is the Hero 9 Black and GoPro released it in September of this year. Every year when GoPro releases a new camera, I like to create a beginner's guide for it. Myself, I love GoPros. Not only are they great for capturing action sports, they're just an all around great camera for travel and adventure, family vacations, just due to their durability, their nice compact size, and not to mention that they're waterproof right out of the box without any additional housing. So it's the perfect camera to be using in and around water, the backyard pool, or perhaps just a day at the beach. Due to the incredible stabilization that GoPro is built into the Hero 9 Black, it's the perfect choice for vloggers on the go and those who don't want to be tied down with gear. Now this video could get kind of long so it's a good idea to maybe watch it in small chunks just so you don't get overwhelmed. Of course you can always bookmark it that way you can come back and reference it later. This year I've broken it down into chapters and I have all the different chapter marks listed down in the description of this video so that way if you want to come back and just jump to a certain point you're able to do so easily. So with all that out of the way let's just get right into it. So when you purchase the Hero 9 Black, this is basically what you're going to get. And uh, this year they've done it a little bit differently. They've actually included a reusable case. In past years they've been packaged in a plastic box. And I think GoPro is trying to make their packaging a little bit more environmentally friendly. Which is always a good thing. So let's go ahead, we'll take the GoPro out of the box and we'll go over all the equipment that comes inside. So it's a pretty nice case that they give you this year with it. It's not overly big. It's just the perfect little size to hold your GoPro and a little bit of gear. So when you open it up, this is everything that's going to be inside the package. Now I've already had mine out of the package, so yours could look a little bit different. At the top here we have some literature. Now the written material that they give you is very minimal and uh, that's why I make these beginner's guides because if you're new to GoPro they don't really give you a lot of information on how to use it. So on the left hand side here you can see we have our GoPro. So we're just going to set that aside for a minute and we'll take a look at what else comes in the package. We have a USB-C cable. Primarily you're going to be using this to charge your GoPro. We have a battery. We have a sticky mount. Now this sticky mount has a curved surface, so you can use this to stick onto helmets or anything that has a slightly curved surface to it. And we're gonna go a little bit more into detail about mounting here in a minute. And then lastly, we have a buckle mount. And again, this is to do with mounting and we'll cover that here coming up shortly. And that's basically it. This uh, cardboard tray can be removed. And then of course you can use it just to store all your gear. If you buy any other small accessories for your GoPro, it'll fit inside as well. So there is some protection around the GoPro that you will have to remove. Now mine look a little rough because like I said, I've already had mine out of the box. But basically there's one on the lens there that has to be removed. One on that front screen. We have this protective film around the outside of the GoPro. And then of course there's one last one on the back of the screen. So this here is the Hero 9 Black, so we're going to take a closer look at it here and I'll kind of go over all the buttons and different things for it. On the side here you can see we have our first button, and that is a power and mode button. When the camera is powered off, a single press of that will power the camera on. When the camera is already powered on, a press of that button will change the shooting mode. It'll go from things like photo mode to video mode to time lapse mode. When the camera's on, if you do a long press on it, that will power the camera off. At the top here we have our shutter button, and depending on what mode we're in, that'll either take a photo or record a video. At the bottom here we have our mounting system. These are GoPro finger mounts and they fold out just like that. It's a nice convenient setup that GoPro has. If you're using the camera handheld you can put them away and that way they're not in your way. When it's time to mount it on a handle or some kind of mount you just pull them out like that. Now new this year with the Hero 9 Black is this front facing screen. In past models they always had a screen there. It was a smaller screen and basically black and white for displaying data. But this year you can now get a video feed on it. It's great if you're vlogging. It helps you line up your shots. Or if you have your GoPro mounted it can help you frame everything properly. Another thing new with the Hero 9 Black this year compared to last year is that they've brought back the removable protective lens. This lens here can be removed if you happen to damage it if it gets cracked or scratched. And to remove it all you do is twist just like that and it comes right off. To put it back on you just line it up 
and then twist it back in. On the back here we have our display screen. GoPro this year has made it a little bit bigger, so that makes things like previewing your media and navigating the menu a little bit easier. On the side here we have our access door, and underneath there is where we install the battery, the memory, and it's also where we plug in to charge the GoPro. To access it we just pull down that little tab there, and the door comes right open. If your door happens to fall off, not to worry, this door is actually designed to be removed. If you need to put the door back on, you just line up that groove to the pin there at the top and just press it back in. If we look inside that compartment there, you can see we have the large opening for the battery. Right below that we have a USB-C port, and that's how we charge the GoPro, or if we're going to be connecting it to a computer to transfer data, that's where we would plug it in. And right above the battery, it might be kind of hard to see on film there, but there's a little slot and that's where we install the memory. Now before we get too far here, let's talk about how we mount our GoPro. I've already shown you the mounting fingers that are in the bottom of the camera here. You can see they fold out just like that. And that's basically primarily how you're going to mount it. Now when you buy accessories, they're going to come with one of two different mounting options. For example, this here is called the GoPro Shorty. It's a little mini extension pole, and it also has a built-in tripod. And as you can see here at the top, it has finger mounts as well. So with this type of accessory, it just slides in there like that. You would then take the thumb screw that comes with your GoPro, you would insert it in, and then tighten it up like that. And there we go. So that's the most common way on which you're going to connect to a lot of different devices. Now when we pulled the GoPro out of the box, we've seen it came with this buckle mount. And you would use that with accessories like this. This here is the GoPro floating hand grip. This is a good thing to have if you're going to be in and around water. If you happen to drop your GoPro in the water, this thing will keep it afloat. And you'll notice at the top here, it doesn't have any finger mounts. What it has is a buckle mount receiver. And that's what this buckle mount is for. We just pull that rubber flap up. We then slide it into the buckle mount receiver and then push that rubber flap back in. And as you can see now, we have our finger mounts, so we can mount the GoPro right on top there. The idea of the buckle mount system is it allows you to go from one accessory to another easily without having to undo the thumb screw every time. And you would also use this buckle mount when you're using these sticky mounts. Like I said, this here is a curved surface, but you can get these with a flat surface as well. You would use the curved surface if you're going to stick it to something like a helmet or maybe a car roof. You would use a flat surface if you're going to be sticking it to something like a skateboard or a surfboard. And then, like I mentioned, you would just use your buckle mount and that would insert right inside. Now in this next section here we're going to talk about how to charge your GoPro and some different techniques. Now I highly recommend that you charge a GoPro before you try to connect it to the GoPro app which we're going to cover here in a minute. The GoPro batteries don't ship with very much charge in them. So let's take a look here at how to charge. So as I already shown you when you get your GoPro you're going to get one charging cable and one battery. It's highly recommended to get a second or possibly even a third battery. These batteries don't last terribly long so if you're going to be out for a day and you're going to be filming with your GoPro you're going to deplete the battery fairly quickly. Myself, I think the sweet spot is three batteries, perhaps even four, depending on how much you're going to be using your GoPro. So before we can charge it, we have to open up the battery door and install the battery. To install it, we want the logo on the battery to face the front of the camera, and it just slides down in there like that. If it's already charged, you just go ahead and close the door, but we need to charge it, so what we're going to do is plug in our USB-C cable into the USB-C port. Now it is important to mention that GoPro does not include any kind of charging brick when you purchase your GoPro. I guess they figure everybody has tons of them kicking around. For example, here is one that comes with an iPhone, so if you have something like that kicking around, or for an Android phone, you can use those charging bricks to charge your GoPro, as long as it has a USB-A port on it. Alternatively, GoPro does sell their own charger, and uh, you can see it here. When you purchase it, you get a USB-A and a USB-C port. And you can charge your GoPro either by the USB-A or the USB-C. So let's go ahead and we will plug in our GoPro. You'll notice here at the top, a red light will appear. That signifies that it is charging. And again at the back, there's another red light. Once the GoPro is fully charged, those red lights will go out. Now another good way to charge your GoPro is by using a charging hub. GoPro sells this charging hub for the Hero 9 Black, and it allows you to charge two batteries at once. And when you purchase a charging hub, you also get one spare battery with it. The battery just plugs in there like that. And then again, we just plug it into power, and you'll notice a light come on there and that's signifying that it's charging. Now the reason I highly recommend these charging hubs is that when you use your GoPro to charge the batteries, your camera's kind of out of commission. If you're on holidays and you have to stop to recharge a battery and you use the camera, you can no longer use it. If you use the charging hub, you can continue to record. Now another interesting thing to note is that you can charge your GoPro either via the camera or by the charging hub with a power bank. As you can see here, if you just take your GoPro charging cable and plug it in, you'll see that you'll be able to charge. 
just like that there. If you're a camper, a backpacker, or a hiker, you're able to charge your GoPro batteries on the go. So now for this next section here, we're going to talk about memory for your GoPro. Now, depending on where you bought it, you might have actually had a memory card thrown in. If you ordered directly from GoPro, they were running a promotion where they gave you a 32 gigabyte card for free. Typically, when you buy a GoPro, it doesn't come with memory, so it is something usually you have to purchase on your own. If you did get the package with a 32 gigabyte card, you still might want to consider upgrading to a larger card. 32 gigabytes is a decent amount of storage, but you'd be surprised at how quickly that can fill up. As you can see here, I have a 128 gigabyte card and that's the size that I prefer to use. You can use even larger ones at 256 gigabytes, but myself I'd rather have two 128s than one 256. And that way if you're out filming and one of the cards happens to go bad, which they do from time to time, you're not stuck without a memory card, you still have a backup. However, the most important thing, whatever size you decide to go with, you want a nice fast memory card. GoPro has a list of memory cards that they recommend on their website. I'll include a link to it down below in the description of this video. SanDisk is my favorite brand, I've been using them for years, and I've always been happy with their performance. Now installing the memory card can be a little bit finicky, uh, but basically what you want to do is have the graphic facing towards the battery. And uh, you just want to slide it down in there. You might have to use your fingernail until you hear it click and then it will stay put. Some people find it easier to remove the battery when they're installing the memory card, so it's kind of all personal preference. So now in this next section we're going to power on the GoPro for the first time. We're going to run through the setup procedure and we're going to pair it to the GoPro app. Now with the GoPro app you don't have to pair it right away. If you decide to skip that step you can go back in and pair your GoPro to the GoPro app at any time. However I don't recommend that because your GoPro is new there's a very important firmware update waiting for you. It adds functionality. If you use your GoPro without that firmware update, it could be a little buggy and some important features will be missing. Now you can use your GoPro without pairing it to the GoPro app at all. If you don't have a smartphone or you don't have one that is compatible, you can go ahead and use your GoPro without one. You'll have to update your firmware via a computer. But if you do have a smartphone, it is a really good idea to get the GoPro app. There's a lot of really handy tools built into the GoPro app that will really bring out the functionality of your GoPro. For example, you can get a live feed on the GoPro app on your smartphone. So if you have your GoPro mounted somewhere away from you, you can still see what it's filming. You can use the app as a remote for the GoPro so you can stop and start recording and change all your settings. It's a great way to download the media from your GoPro to your smartphone. And they also have some nice built-in editing tools so you can go in and edit some of your clips and then share them right to social media. So let's go ahead, we're going to power on our GoPro for the first time. So again, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, we're going to just press once on the power button on the side there. And the GoPro will start to power on. Because this is the first time that we are powering on our GoPro, we're going to come to the setup screen. We only have to do this once. The next time we power on our GoPro, it's going to go right to the home screen. So the first thing is we're going to select our language. I already have English selected, so we'll hit the check mark there. The next question it's going to ask you is if you agree to their legal stuff, and uh, we will hit agree. The next option there, it asks you if you want to turn on GPS. And that's a good thing to do because it does unlock some features when editing videos. You can put some telemetry data on your videos, so we're going to turn that on. And at this point, you can see there, it's now asking us to connect to the GoPro app. So I'm going to set the GoPro down, and we're now going to go over to our smartphone. Now, as you can see right here, I already have the GoPro app installed on my phone. But if you don't have it, you just have to go to the App Store or the Google Play Store, depending on what phone you're using, and download it. So we're going to launch the GoPro app. Now, if you've never had a GoPro connected to the GoPro app, I do believe at this point it will automatically go in and start searching for your GoPro. I've already had it connected to this phone, so I have to go in and do it manually. So if yours doesn't go into the automatic searching feature, what we're going to do is hit this first button here on the very left hand side and then we're going to click this plus sign and as you can see there it's now searching we now get a message saying we found your gopro so we want to connect camera at this point it's going to ask us if we want to pair it so we do want to hit pair we get a confirmation that the gopro has been paired then asks us what we want to name our camera I just called mine Hero 9 Black, and now we'll save the name. Now I've already updated the firmware on my Hero 9 Black, 
At this point, somewhere in here, it's going to tell you that there is a firmware update and it'll ask you to install it. All you do is follow the on-screen instructions. It could take five, possibly 10 minutes, depending on your internet speed, as it does have to download the firmware update. Your camera will turn on and off a few times, so just let it go through and do what it needs to do. When it's done updating the firmware, you'll get a confirmation on the screen saying that the firmware has been updated successfully. So now I'm not gonna show you all the features of the GoPro app, but a couple interesting things I do wanna show you here. So let's launch our GoPro app, and you can see here it lifts the camera that we've just added. At this point, we can do two things. We can either control the GoPro, or we can view media. Now how it works is that the GoPro broadcasts its own Wi-Fi signal, but you can also connect to it via Bluetooth. So for example, if we were just gonna control our GoPro, it's gonna connect just by Bluetooth. The reason it does that, it's quicker to connect and you're not gonna waste as much battery. If you wanna view your media, then it's gonna prompt you to connect to the Wi-Fi. So I'll show you how to do both here. First of all, let's hit control your GoPro. So right now it's connecting by Bluetooth. So we can go through and change our settings. We can start and stop recording. We can power the GoPro off. We can change all our settings. But as you can see, we don't have a live preview because we haven't connected to the Wi-Fi yet. Now at this point, if we want a live preview, we just hit enable preview. You can see there we get an information box saying we're gonna to connect to the GoPro Wi-Fi signal. So we'll hit continue. There's where it asks us to join. And as you can see there now, we have a preview right on our smartphone. And if you want to preview or transfer the media that you have stored on your Hero 9 Black, we would just click on that button there, and that allows us to view the gallery. So we've gone through and familiarized ourselves with the hardware and how to get everything ready to start filming for the first time. So let's go ahead now and we'll take a look at the menu system and how we navigate through it. So I'm going to power the camera on here. Just to be thorough, I just want to show you here quickly, to power the camera off, all you do is press and hold. It's a long press on the power button. You'll hear a beep and then it will shut off. So this here is the main screen for the Hero 9 Black. And as you can see at the top here, there's a picture of a video camera. So that signifies that we are in video mode. If we were to press the record button at the top, it would start recording video. And right beside the video camera, you can see we have a dot on both sides. That signifies that there's two other modes that we can switch to. There's two different ways to switch to these modes. First is to swipe on the screen. If I swipe that way, you can see it switches us into photo mode. And we know we're in photo mode because the icon at the top is changed to a picture of a camera. So now I can swipe back, that puts us back to video mode. And I can swipe the other way now, and that puts us into time-lapse mode. The other way to switch modes is by using the power mode button at the side there. Just a single press will switch modes. So now let's take a quick look around the menu and I'll kind of explain briefly what everything does. First thing here, we have our battery indicator that tells us how much battery power we have left. At the top, as we just discussed, that tells us what mode we're in. Over here on the very left-hand side, that tells us how much storage is left on the memory card. For example, because we're in photo mode, it's telling us that we can take at least 999 photos. If we were to switch over to video mode, that would tell us how much video we could record. And that changes depending on what size of memory card you have installed. Now these buttons down here at the bottom are going to be different depending on what filming mode you're in. If you're in photo mode, video mode, or time-lapse mode, those buttons will change. This first button here at the top basically allows us to set what kind of photo we're going to take. If we click on it there, you can see by default it's in standard, so it's just going to take a regular photo. We can swipe down, and that's going to take a raw photo. Basically raw allows you to capture more data within the photo. The photo sizes tend to be a little bit larger, and they're not as compatible. It's mainly designed if you want to go in and do a lot of editing to it, and applications such as Lightroom. If you don't plan on doing any kind of heavy-duty editing, I wouldn't recommend shooting in RAW. So anyways, we'll swipe back up. You can see we go back to standard. Uh, the next option up is HDR. That stands for High Dynamic Range. If you have a smartphone, you're probably already familiar with that term. Most smartphones today shoot in HDR automatically. HDR takes a series of photos and merges them all together. It kind of allows you to get detail in low lights and in highlights. HDR doesn't work well in all shooting environments, so it's something you just have to kind of play around with to see what you like best. The next option up there is Super Photo. It's similar to HDR, but it does have a few extra enhancements. It really allows you to capture a nice shot in complex lighting environments. Back at the main screen here, we have our digital zoom. You can see we can click on that, and that allows us to zoom in two times. Down here at the bottom left hand side we have our digital lenses. Now I'm going to cover that a little bit more in detail here coming up in a minute. Above that we have our timer. You can see right now it's set to off. We can set it to three seconds 
or we can set it to 10 seconds. When we have the photo timer enabled, you can see there I have it set to three seconds. When we press the shutter button at the top, it's gonna to give us a countdown before it takes a photo. Now down here at the bottom, you can see we have this large button. Right now it says photo wide. So that tells us we're in photo mode and the field of view is set to wide. It's also how we get to our sub menus. We can click on that and that kind of gives you all different options when in photo mode. For example, you can see we have our regular photo mode. We have live burst, we have burst, and we have night photo. Now I'm not gonna go into detail on everything because we would be here for hours, but in a nutshell, basically night photo is just like it sounds. It allows you to take photos at night. It uses a long exposure to lighten up the environment. Burst and live burst basically takes a whole bunch of photos at once, and that's great if you're trying to capture action. And then of course we go back to our regular photo mode there at the top. So if we wanted to shoot a burst photo, we would just select burst. And now when we press the shutter button, you can see it's going to fire off a burst. So that's important to know every one of these menus, as I shown you at the top here, has a sub menu with different options. So from this sub menu here, not only can we change how we're shooting, we can actually click the edit button there and we can change some of the output settings. You can see we can change the field of view there again. We can change what kind of photo we're taking. We can set our zoom level. We can set the timer on and off. And the nice thing about the way that GoPro has it laid out now is that we can actually go in and create our own modes. Now I'm gonna go a little bit more deeper into that here in a minute. So let's swipe over and go back to video mode and we'll take a look at some of the settings for it. So we've just swiped over, we're now in video mode. And again, at the top, it has the same as I've already explained for photos. We also have our digital zoom there. Again, down here at the bottom, we have our digital lenses. And right above that, you can see we have a picture of a snail. If we turn that on, you can see it changed our frame rate. And that basically allows us to film in slow motion. So it's a quick and easy way to turn on and off slow motion. Over here on the left-hand side, that is what's called Boost. The Hero 9 Black ships with a technology called Hypersmooth 3.0. And that's basically the built-in stabilization. It's super powerful and really keeps your footage stable. If you want a little extra polish, you can actually turn that on and that will keep it even more stable. The only downfall to turning it on is that it crops in tighter. So that's not something you may want to use every time. Again, in video mode, we have our submenus, and that brings up all our different shooting modes when in video mode. You can see we have a slow motion setting. We have 4K cinematic. These are just some pre-made modes that GoPro ships with the Hero 9 Black. Again, you can go down to the bottom and create your own custom mode. For example, you might want a mode where you're filming at 4K 30 frames per second, but you might also want a mode where you're filming at 4K 60 frames per second, and that way you can switch back and forth easy. And just like when we were in photo mode, we can click that little pencil icon, and that allows us to change the various settings of that mode. Now, I just want to mention that if you change a setting, the camera will remember it. So if you power your camera off and you turn it back on, anything that you've adjusted in there will be remembered. Now, our last mode is time-lapse mode. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail for time-lapse mode. I am actually working on a video that's going to kind of go over the time-lapse options more in detail. But basically, again, we have our different time-lapse options. We can do a time warp video, a time-lapse video, or a night-lapse video. So let's talk a little bit more about the digital lenses now. Let's go back into video mode. As I briefly touched upon there, if we click that button there, that brings up our digital lenses. And you can see right now it says that I'm in a wide field of view. We have some other modes. If we go up, you can see we have something called super view. We have linear. If we go down again, we have linear with horizon leveling. And then at the very bottom, we have narrow. Now I'll kind of briefly explain what they are, but I want you to pay attention to what's in the screen. If we take a look at narrow here, you can see that the back of my desk right there is completely straight. So there's no curvature in the image. Over to the side there, you can see I have a plant, but it's not visible in the screen because we're in a very narrow field of view. If we go up, let's go up to linear the next one up. I'll go back to the other linear in a minute here. You can see that the plant is now in the field of view. So that means we've expanded the field of view to be a little bit wider. If we look at the back of my desk, it's still nice and straight. If we go up to the next one wide, you can see that the plan is more visible. That means we're capturing a lot more data, but we start to get this curvature you can see there in the desk. Now, depending on how you angle the camera, that curvature gets a little more exaggerated. So a wide field of view is great for capturing a large amount of the scene, but you are gonna get a little bit of distortion. And again, if we go up to super view, you can see that now we can fit almost my whole desk in there. All of the plan is pretty well visible, but that curvature is also still there. So that's just one of those things you have to play around with to figure out what you like. Now, the one I didn't show you here is linear with horizon leveling. You can see here we have linear and then linear with horizon leveling. Basically with horizon leveling, if you watch the top of my desk there, as I turn the camera, 
You can see that when we play back this video, if we were recording it, you wouldn't even know that the camera's turning. Now, if you turn it to an extreme, you can see there that uh, it will go crooked. So that allows you to have a lot of movement in your camera, but still keep the horizon level. You can see there when I go up to regular linear, it changes right away. So basically that's what digital lenses are. Again, it's just something you have to go in and play with and decide what you like best. Now let's take a look how to edit and create our own custom modes. As I've already shown you, if we click on that submenu button there at the bottom, it lists all the standard modes. And as mentioned, you can go through and edit any of those modes. But if we want to create our own mode, we click that plus sign at the bottom. It gives us an option of what kind of video mode we want to be in. I'm just going to leave it in the regular video mode. Tap the screen that goes to the next section. At this point, we can set all our parameters on what we want in that mode. For example, we can set our frame rate and resolution. We can change it to 4K, 30 frames per second. We can set our stabilization level. You can turn stabilization right off. You can have a little bit of stabilization or you can go all the way up to boost that we talked about. So it just depends on what you're filming and how much stabilization you want. Now down here, if we keep scrolling, we have ProTune settings and we can set uh, different parameters, more advanced settings. Now I'm not going to go into detail what these are. I do actually have a video on my channel where I kind of break it down. So definitely go and watch that. It will uh, kind of explain everything more in detail. But one thing I do recommend changing on here is the bit rate. By default, it's on standard and you can bump it up to a high bit rate. Basically, that's going to give you a better quality video. Just keep in mind that the file sizes will be substantially larger. So that's kind of a personal preference. But myself, when filming, I want the best quality possible. So I always put the bit rate on high. Once you have everything set the way you want it, you click on the check mark. And here we can set a custom graphic and a name. Let's call this one outdoors. We'll click the check mark. And you can see here we now have our outdoor mode. If we click on that to go back to all of our submenus, you can see here we have our outdoor listed at the top. That's the one we just made. So that's a really handy feature. You can go in and create several of these custom modes. So if you're a person who films differently for different scenarios, you can switch back and forth quite easy. If you've created one and you don't want it anymore, again, we can just go into it, go down to the very bottom and hit delete. And that's going to delete that custom mode that you've just made. Now, any of these modes that came shipped with your GoPro, if you've changed some settings and you want to go back to the default, you can just go down to the very bottom and hit restore. And that's going to restore the preset. So don't worry too much about going in and changing things. You can always set it back to the way it was. So now in this next section, let's talk about how to capture on the Hero 9 Black. Now, of course, the most common way to capture is by pressing the shutter button, but there's actually three different methods in which we can capture content on our GoPro. So I'll just demonstrate the most common method first. You can see here by that icon, we're in video mode. So just by pressing the shutter button, it's going to start recording video. And by pressing it again, it will stop recording. Same thing if we go over to photo mode, press the button and it will take a photo. So that's pretty standard, but GoPro does have another method called quick capture. So let's uh, go ahead and we'll power off our GoPro. Say you're out for a hike with your GoPro and something's happening pretty interesting and you want to capture it. If we have to do it the traditional way, powering on the GoPro, setting our mode, it might be too late to capture what we wanted. So GoPro has a thing called quick capture. And when the GoPro is off, if you just press the record button, the GoPro is going to power on. It's going to start recording video. When you press the shutter button to stop recording, the GoPro is going to power back off. Now the third way to capture content is by using your voice. GoPro has voice control built into every GoPro from the Hero 5 Black end up. Now by default it's disabled so we have to turn it on first. And to do so we swipe down from the top and you can see this picture of a head there over on the very left hand side at the top. If we click that, that will turn it on. It's going to ask us what language we want to use as it does support a variety of different languages. So I want to leave mine on English so I'll press yes and we will exit out of the menu. So once we have voice control enabled, we can say things like GoPro, start recording. You can see there, it's now recording a video. And then we can say GoPro, stop recording. Now the nice thing about voice command is you don't have to be in that specific mode to capture content. For example, you can see there, I'm still in video mode, but I can say things like GoPro, take a photo. You can see there it's now switched us over to photo mode and it took the picture and we can go back and say GoPro start recording. GoPro stop recording. 
And you can see there, it just switches back and forth depending on what command you give it. It even supports burst mode. You can say, GoPro, shoot a burst. So definitely a really handy feature, especially if you have this on an extension pole and say you're going to do a selfie. You can just yell at your GoPro, tell it to start recording or take a photo, and it will do it. Now, a couple other tricks you can do with it is you can actually power off your GoPro by saying, GoPro, turn off. You can see there it's going to power off. Now, with the Hero 9 Black, you can actually turn it on with your voice, but that's something we have to enable. So let's go ahead and power it on here for a minute. We're going to go back to our settings. We're going to swipe over, hit Preferences, and you can see there we have an option for voice control. So now if we scroll down, I actually want to show you something here first quickly. You can see there we can get a list of commands. If we click on that, it's going to show you all the different commands in which we can do. But there's that option. It's called Wake On Voice. So let's go ahead and turn that on. So I've shut the GoPro off, but now we can say, GoPro, turn on. You can see there, it's now powered itself on. So in this section here, I'm going to talk about how to preview media that you've captured on your GoPro. If you film something, you might just want to take a quick look at it to make sure it looks good and see if you have to reshoot it or not. So to access the media that we've recorded, we're going to swipe from the bottom up. You can see there it's going to display the last thing that was captured. We can use these arrows on either side to go to the next video or next photo, or we can hit this icon on the top left hand side. And basically that's going to give us a grid view of everything we have stored on the memory card. If it's a video, we can go in, we can play it, we can mute it if we don't want other people to hear what has been recorded. We can use that button to scrub through it. And down here in the bottom left hand side, we can delete it if we so wish. To get out of the preview menu, we just slide back down from the top. Now in this next section here, I want to talk about a new feature that GoPro added this year with the Hero 9 Black, and that's called Hindsight. If we go into our video settings, and it doesn't matter what mode you're in, whether you're in 4K, 1080, 2.7K, if we click on the edit button there, you can see there we have this option called Hindsight. Now by default it is off. And what that does, it allows you to capture content before you even hit the record button. And you can set the duration of 15 or 30 seconds before you actually hit the record button. So I'll just kind of demonstrate that here for you. Let's go ahead and we're going to turn it on. And I'm going to set it for 30 seconds. Now I'm going to exit out of the menu. As you can see here, we haven't hit the record button yet, but you can see we have this counter here at the top. So technically it is actually recording right now. Once it gets to that 30 seconds there, you can see it's now turned blue. So it's actually recording a buffer of 30 seconds. Now the reason why this feature is handy is say you're filming something where something important is going to happen, but you don't know when. You don't want to sit and record the whole thing because you could end up with hours worth of footage. In this situation, it's going to be recording and when it happens, you could then hit the record button, record for a few seconds and shut off, but everything that happened 30 seconds before that will be included. So for example here, if you can see the screen, I'm not recording yet, but let's do this just in front of the camera. So I'm going to hit record now. You can see I'm not doing anything in front of the camera. I'm going to shut it off. So now let's go and play back that video that I just recorded. As you can see there, it's recorded me talking before I even hit the record button. But watch this here. You can see there, there's my hand moving before I even hit the record button. So that feature is definitely handy, but it isn't something you want to use all the time. Even though I'm not recording right now, the battery will be depleted as if I am recording. So we can go back in at any time and disable that hindsight feature. One last little feature I want to show you that's also new with the Hero 9 Black, and that is timed recording. So let's go back into our modes, and we will hit the edit button. You can see here we have this option called scheduled capture. If we click on it, we can actually set a time in which we want the camera to turn on and start recording. And that can come in handy for a lot of different things. Say you want to capture a sunrise, maybe even perhaps a time lapse of the sunrise, but you don't want to wake up that early in the morning to capture it. You can do so easily with this new feature. Once we've set our time and we go to exit out, you can see we get this message here. It says you're all set. You can turn off your GoPro to save battery. So we can now power off our GoPro, mount it and position it how we want and it will turn on and start recording at the set time. And you can see when I go back to the main screen there, we have that timestamp at the top telling us when it's going to turn on and start recording. A couple other quick things you can do here, if you want to adjust the time, instead of having to go through the whole menu to find that section, we can just click on that time up at the top there. And you can see here it gives us an option to adjust. 
that'll bring that rate up. We could then go in and adjust the time, or if you want to disable it altogether, we just swipe down there on the very right hand side and we can turn that feature off. If we go back to the main screen now, you can see that timestamp is gone. Now lastly, before I go here, I just want to go over some basic accessories that you might want to consider as a new GoPro user. Now depending on why you purchased a GoPro, the accessories that you're going to want to use are going to be different for everybody. But just in general, let's just go over a few things here that you might want to consider. Uh, the first here is a floating hand grip. I've already featured this earlier on in the video. Basically, when your GoPro is mounted on it and you're in water, this thing will keep it afloat if you happen to let go on it. It's a great accessory for travel because it also just acts as a nice handle for your GoPro. So if you're filming shots handheld, you've got a nice handle. And then if you go under the pool or water, you can take it in and it will keep it afloat if you happen to drop it. And it has a lanyard that you can put around your wrist. The next here is something fairly new. GoPro introduced this last year. This is a rotating swivel clip with a magnetic base. So you can actually mount your GoPro to different things that are magnetic. The nice thing about this is that it spins so you'll be able to get the proper angle. Of course it has a clip on it so you can clip it to a backpack. Now the nice thing about this mount is that it's pretty small and compact so if you're traveling and space is at a minimum you can pack this along and you don't have to worry about adding a lot of bulk to your setup. The next item here is a light for your GoPro. You can see it actually has finger mounts on it as well so if you have this packed in your camera bag you can connect it to a grip and then use it as a little flashlight. Or you can mount it on top of your GoPro, so if you're going to be doing any kind of vlogging at night or in dark situations, it'll help light you up a little bit. It has its own built-in battery, and as you can see there, it is rechargeable by USB-C. Now the next thing here is probably one of my most used accessories. Basically, this is just a handle for your GoPro, so if you're going to be doing any kind of handheld filming. It extends a little bit, so if you are going to be vlogging, it just gives you that little bit extra reach. And it has a built-in tripod, so you can uh, set your camera down and capture content. That brings us to our next item here. This is called the Max Grip. And basically it's just like a larger version of the GoPro Shorty. Again, it works just as a nice handle. And this handle is oversized. So if you're wearing thick ski gloves or things like that, you're still able to get a good grip on it. It extends as well. And as you can see, it does give you quite a bit more extension. And just like the Shorty, it does have a built-in tripod. So definitely something to keep in mind as well. The next item here is the GoPro protective housing. Basically with the protective housing, it does two things. As I mentioned early on in the video, the GoPro Hero 9 Black is waterproof all by itself, right out of the box up to 33 feet. If you have purchased it, cause you're gonna be doing some scuba diving, this will allow you to go to 196 feet. So you can go a lot deeper with it. The other nice thing that these things are good for is just a nice hard protective shell for your GoPro. If you're gonna be mounting your GoPro, say on a skateboard, and you're worried about it getting damaged if the skateboard happens to flip over, Mounting it in something like this is going to keep your camera protected. If this happens to get damaged, it's a lot cheaper to replace this casing than it is to replace the whole camera. So definitely something to consider. The next here is the media mod for the Hero 9 Black. Basically your GoPro just slips right into it. In theory, this thing is supposed to give you better audio. Now testing that I've done with it, it's pretty kind of on par. In fact, sometimes in certain situations, it almost sounds a little worse, but it does give you this foam cover over the microphone. So if you are going to be filming in wind, definitely you do get better audio with that wind cover on there. It also gives you a cold shoe at the top and at the side there. So that makes it perfect for mounting things like your GoPro Lite. On the back here, it gives you some extra ports. You can see we have an HDMI port. So if you want to connect that to a monitor, you're able to do so. There's also a USB-C port. So when the GoPro is installed, you can still charge it up. And the last thing it gives you there is a microphone jack. Again, this is one of those things that is not for everybody but something to consider as we talked about earlier in the video the dual charger definitely highly recommend getting a dual charger when you purchase the kit you get one spare battery with it and of course the dual charger if you're a traveler or a camper definitely i recommend getting a power bank for your gopro i've got two here this one here is a 10,000 milliamp power bank this is a 20,000 milliamp power bank these are by rath power both of them are good options it's one of my favorite brands even with this smaller 10,000 milliamp battery you're going to get at least 10 gopro recharges if not more so definitely a power bank is something to keep in mind. And lastly is maybe perhaps you might want to get a better case than what comes with the GoPro. This here is called the GoPro Casey. And when you open it up here, you can see we actually have dividers. They're just held in there with Velcro so you can customize things. It gives you a lot more space for storage and holding your gear. If you have things that are delicate that you don't want to get scratched like lenses and different things, it gives you this nice pouch here at the top. I prefer cases like this than ones you can purchase that have like pre-cut foam in it. And the reason being is that uh, the pre-cut foam, you're very limited to what you can store inside. There's a lot of wasted space just by the foam that's packed in it. And you can't customize it to suit your needs. The Casey I find is just the perfect size to hold all the gadgets you want when you're traveling. 
keeps all your gear in one spot and keeps it well protected. Now I'll include a link down below to all the gear that I featured in this video if you want to go and check it out further. Well folks that is basically it for my beginner's guide. I know there's a lot to digest and like I recommended you may want to bookmark this video and that way you can always come back and reference it later. At this point I'd like to invite you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. I do a lot of tutorials and videos. I dive a little bit deeper into specific features on my channel. I do a lot of demonstration and I review a lot of gear. So if that sounds appealing to you definitely go ahead and subscribe. I want to thank you for watching this video. If you found this video helpful please definitely comment down below and hit the like button. That really helps other people discover this video. Congratulations on your first GoPro. You're going to absolutely love it. It's the perfect little camera for capturing your life. Again thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.